CBDCs are inevitable and they're scary. It's the final absolute realm of control. I mean, they're already removing cash from society. I think they say that just because they wanna be able to trace things easier and that's certainly part of it. But I also have another theory. If you have a $50 bill, I give it to the, the barber for my haircut and then he goes and buys groceries with it from the grocer and the grocer goes and gets his car washed. The $50 goes from place to place and after 20 or 30 transactions, the $50 bill belongs to somebody and it's worth $50. If I pay by card, 1.5% goes to the bank. And then if he takes the money I've given him and pays for the groceries, 1.5% goes to the bank. And after the groceries have been paid for, when he goes to get his car washed, 1.5% goes to the bank. So after 20 or 30 transactions, the $50 is gone, the bank has it all. I think that's why they're so desperate to get rid of cash. It's interesting. CBDCs are the next level because once the money's completely digital, then they control everything you do with it. They control where it goes, but they can also control how and when it can be spent. Imagine some terrible future dystopian society where your money arrives and they say it can only be spent on food or it can only be spent on vegetables because you've had too much meat this week. Or you can't buy transport to a particular area because there's resistance of government oppression in that area. Your money won't work for trains right now because nobody can go down there because we don't want everyone in a large group. We want everyone at home in their pods. And they can track everywhere it goes and they can also track how it's spent and they can control how it's spent. They can put a time limit on it. You have an hour to spend this money. Scary, like think of all the ways they can inflict control over it. This is why also I'm disliked. BBC said this to me when they interviewed me. They said, Lucy, the very intelligent BBC reporter said, word for word, you have a Bugatti and a cigar, and that means it comes with a side order of misogyny. I said, how does having a Bugatti and a cigar come with a side order of misogyny? And you can order misogyny on the side? Looks like it. <laughs> it's like a sauce. And she repeated it, because she couldn't, yeah, you have a Bugatti and a cigar, and it comes with a side order of misogyny. So I was like. They're not sending their best. Yeah, they're, I don't think they have any best, to be honest. But. The point they're making, what she doesn't realize she's making, because she's not smart enough, but what she wanted to say, but she couldn't say in a way which sounded negative is, financial freedom is required for, to a degree to resist. The reason I'm also disliked is because I'm financially successful. If I was broke, they wouldn't care what I say what I say, but I inspire young men, all of my fans, to, to become wealthy. And, they, and, the, and you'd think that'd be fantastic for the society, right? He has millions of young men. He's teaching them to work hard. He's teaching them different ways money can be made. He's teaching them to be fantastic salesmen. He's teaching, he's helping the society. No, because if you have a whole bunch of money, then you can sit and say, no, I don't need your wage. That's bullshit.